Listen carefully. We're starting preaching, y'all. John chapter number 18. And I want to give you something that'll help you tonight. John chapter 18. And I want to preach this evening on four questions to know that Christianity is true. Four questions that show Christianity is true. I'm going to ask you four questions, and if your answer is yes to these four questions, that proves to you that Christianity is true and right. All right? John chapter 18, verse 38. The famous question, Pilate asked the Lord Jesus, and he said in verse 38, Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? My, my, my. Men have asked that from the dawning of time. And when he had said this, he went out to the end of the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. I'm going to introduce the message tonight by telling you a story. A certain young lady was a leader in her youth group in a good Bible preaching church. She took part in everything that went on. She was a youth leader excelled in all the, the activities of the church, sang, went, on, went to camp, went to youth on youth trips, did everything as a part of the church. She got scholarships. She was so smart. She got scholarships to about any college that she wanted to go to. She wound up going to Chapel Hill, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. She went off to college. As she went down there, fine, Christian young lady, she had been to college about three weeks and her daddy called her one day. She got on the phone and her daddy said, uh, how's it going? She said, Dad, I have something to tell you. He said, what? She said, I no longer believe in God. He was shocked. He said, what in the world? She had been to college less than a month. She said, I no longer believe in God. He said, honey, now you, you can't do this. He said, you've been raised in church all of your life. Here you are. And what in the world? And then she said, Dad, I have a New Testament class and my professor is an atheist that teaches us New Testament. She said, he taught us that nobody even knows who wrote the Gospels and that the Bible is full of errors. I no longer believe in God. He made a, almost a four-hour trip all the way to Chapel Hill and talked to his daughter and got nowhere. And he said, you mean to tell me that all the foundation of your whole life, you've investigated all the evidence and you've come to the conclusion that Christianity is not true in four weeks? Now, you know what happened to that girl? Can I say something to you all tonight? You listening? You know what happened to that girl? She didn't have her feet on the ground good, solid. She didn't, she wasn't really... She wasn't really rooted where she needed to be. Then she went to college and she was under all that pressure to give in and party and have a good time. And then some guy with a degree gets up and intimidates her and all the students, she couldn't stand the pressure. She give in to the pressure and it made an atheist. You know good and well, she couldn't have investigated the facts and studied it thoroughly in four weeks. She gave in to pressure. That uh, teacher went to one of those colleges and he asked a big group of students, he said, if I could prove that Christianity was true, would you become a Christian? And they still said, no. Now think about that. Think about that. He said, if I could prove it's true, they said, still, no. You know why? They want to party. They want to live it up. They want to move in with a girlfriend, move their, her in with them. They want to live it up and don't want nobody tell them what to do. It's politically incorrect. The pressure is on to be secular in our thinking, mind, and beliefs. So I want to ask you four questions tonight, and you, get, you, you settle these things in your own heart. The first question is, does truth exist? The second one is, does God exist? The third one is, are miracles possible? Is it possible for a miracle? That's something above the natural laws to happen. And the fourth one is, is the Bible true? I'll go over these really quick. Number one, does truth exist? 
Now, we're living in a time when their kids are being taught, people are believing now, uh, uh, truth is relative. That means I got my truth, you got your truth. Whatever you think is true for you is true for you. And whatever I think is true for me is true for me, even if my truth is 100% different than your truth. That's called relativism. Uh, now, one man said this. Uh, he said, um, they said, uh, the truth is relative. There is no such thing as absolute Truth, no such thing. Now, if a man says that, you, if you, now listen to me, kids, because you're going to face this stuff. You're going to face it, especially if you go to college, even some Christian colleges. You better listen to me. If somebody comes up and they'll say, nobody, no truth, there is no such thing as truth. You give them their own medicine. You ask, is that true? Uh, is it true that there's no such thing as truth? If it's true, there's no such thing as truth. There is such thing as truth. And so they, if there's no such thing as truth, they don't even know if what they're saying is the truth. So when you say there's no such thing as truth, the bottom falls out of everything. I believe God's let us have certain things so we can know there's absolutes. Like two plus two is four. It matters not how you was raised. It doesn't matter what kind of vision or dream you had. Two plus two is four. That's absolute. That's absolute. Uh, it, uh, saying, saying there is no such thing as truth is like saying I can't speak a word in English. See? That's like saying my parents had no kids that lived. You listening? That's like saying my brother is an only child. That's, that's like saying everything I say is a lie. Think about that for a little while. That'll pop your head. Hey, listen, uh, Pilate said one time, what is truth? What is truth? Is there such a thing? Now, you better listen, because some of y'all got little kids. They're growing up into a world that's completely secular. And if the Lord don't come in another 20 years, these young people sitting in here tonight, it's going to take all they can do to have their faith right and think right because the pressure is on for them to become secularized, so-called atheist and agnostic. Now, now truth is uh, they're subjective. That means that you put your opinion in. If somebody says this is subjective truth, that means it's tainted with your opinion. Objective truth means it's more neutral. It's a principle that anyone can observe. Uh, can observe. Now, that means... Um, uh, that means uh, two plus two is four. That's absolute. That means there's absolute north, south, east, and west. All of these things are absolutes. These are truths that are absolute. So if, if, there's a, if there's absolute truth in math, there's absolute truth in everything else. I mean, something's good or bad. There's absolute right. There's absolute wrong. There is such a thing as truth. Does truth exist? The answer is yes. What I said is true. And if it's not, then they're, they're just floating on a ball in outer space going nowhere except into oblivion. Number two, does God exist? Does God exist? Either there is a great almighty creator that created the whole universe and sustains it as we speak, or else it all got here by itself out of nowhere by pure chance. Now think about that. There was no time, space, and matter. Some of you probably haven't thought about this. I want you to think about this when you go home. Think about time, space, and matter. That's everything. You know, who? if, if, if there wasn't nothing and there's no God, time, space, and matter came out of nowhere. If there was no time, they wouldn't know when to do it. If there was no space, they wouldn't know where to do it. And if there was no matter, they wouldn't nothing to do, put in the space. So when did time, matter, and space come into existence? We believe that God spoke it into existence. Now, if there's no God, time, space, and matter all evolved out of nowhere all by itself. They believe out of nothing. There was timeless, spaceless, matterless, 
and then it come uh, as, as into what we see today. We believe that there was a creative intelligence now, that's why you'll hear my sermon. If, 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 you're, if, you're, if you listen to this and you want more on this subject, look at my sermon on, on uh, there is no such thing as an honest thinking atheist. I believe that. I believe the Lord gave me that. There is no such thing as an honest thinking atheist. I didn't say they weren't educated. I said if they're honest, they're just not thinking. And if they're thinking, they're really not honest. One of the two. Because if a man sits and you sit and think about it long enough, you can't believe that everything popped out of nowhere with no cause and nothing made. You can't believe that. If you believe that, you're not thinking. And if you believe that, you're, uh, if you say you believe it, you're not honest. If you are thinking. So that's why I say there's no such thing as an honest thinking atheist. The universe is a fine tune mechanism. It is on schedule. Uh, and said one time, they said, well, you can't prove there's a God. And it scares Christians. You know what our problem is? Our problem is we are intimidated by those people uh, that get you on know, talk shows and laugh and make fun of the Bible and talk in snakes and stuff like that. And fools on HBO and all that. They get on there and they make fun of Christians and they say, how can anybody believe in talking snakes? <laughs> well, listen, we can give them their own medicine. How can anybody believe the whole universe? Universe popped out of nowhere. Ha 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 ha. Big joke. You got to be about half on crack to believe that. I mean, nobody in their right mind can believe that. Nothing can come out of nowhere. Your watch didn't come out of nowhere. A rock didn't come from nowhere. Time, space, and matter. You know, this universe is so tuned. The earth goes around the sun every 365 and one fourth day. And with a few uh, minutes are different. Hey, you know why it does that? Somebody set it on schedule. Now, the earth tonight is 23.5, I think, degrees off its axis. That means it's tilted 23 degrees. That number 23 is a very interesting number. We'll do it, take a study on it sometime. And it's tilted 23 degrees. Now, we as Christians believe that before the flood, the earth was straight up. 360 degrees uh, are exactly or 360 days around the sun was a perfect year, 30 days a month, and it was straight up and down. The flood hit this thing so hard that it actually tilted the earth 23 degrees. The marks of the earth, go up to Grandfather Mountain, go over yonder at Table Rock. How'd that get pushed up there like that? It didn't used to be like that. God didn't make that like that, that big rock just jagged, sticking up like that to start with. How did them, every time I go to Asheville, anytime, I look at them rocks and they're like this, and they're straight like that. They was straight like that. Something pushed them things up. And when the flood came, the whole the Bible said the foundations of the earth got, got shook, brother. Then that thing went and cracked and pushed those mountains up. Glaciers didn't do that. Glaciers had no, listen, there's elephant, there's, there's elephant bones and, um, and uh, clams and, or, and sea animal fossils in the same rock strata all buried together at the same time in the mountains. Millions of them. Fish up there. There's only one thing that could have done that and it wasn't a glacier, it was a flood. It was a flood. Does God exist? Yes, sir, he sure does. You say, you can't prove there's a God. You sure can't prove there ain't one. Don't, and we'll give you your own medicine. The burden ain't on us to prove there is one. The burden's on you to prove there ain't. Says, I got more evidence to prove there is one you got there ain't one. You know what evidence I got to prove there's a God? Look at everything. That proves it. That proves there's a God. There is a God, folks. He's looking at us right now. He's on the throne right now, looking at Shining Light Baptist Church, saying, come on, preacher, tell them the truth about it. I'm glad to tell people there is a God. One guy wrote in the other day, one of my sermons said, that guy screams too much. Now, you know why I scream? I got something to scream about. You know why they don't? They ain't got nothing to scream about. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, if you change the gravitational pull of this earth just a little bit, it would ruin everything. You know why we have these weird seasons, why it's so cold out there right now? That tilt 
made the weather change different. Now, you say, well, it's just an accident. Suppose you were out walking on the beach and you walked down through there and you looked up there and you saw in the sand, John loves Mary. Would anybody here say the waves beating up there formed that? Would any scientist say that? Not a one. Then everyone say somebody did that's intelligence. That's not an accident. That's not random. Just a simple little thing like John loves Mary. And them same people believe the sand got here by accident. And the waves can come just by accident. And the salt water's in the ocean so it won't freeze. And them salt water fish can live there. And the fresh water's up here so we can drink it. All by pure accident. Not to mention feelings and emotions and brain and thought and life and death. Everything just like God said. Ladies and gentlemen, if, to prove there's no God, you would have to go all over outer space at the same time. He might be hiding over here. When you go over there, he might be over there. And that still wouldn't prove a God because he might be in the other dimension that you ain't been in. You can't prove there's not a God. You say, you can't prove there is one. I got more proof than you got there ain't one. I've got proof of life. Life don't come from nothing. Something alive don't come from something that never was alive. There's, there's plenty of proof there is a God. There's the moral argument. Did you know every tribe and tongue on this earth has a moral argument okay, that's wrong to kill somebody? And, and now, now listen, if there ain't no God, there ain't no right and wrong. We're animals. If there's no God, there's no right and wrong. Amen? Now you start talking like that and they say, oh, well, you can't hurt other people. Who says you can't? If there's no God, there's no morality. If there's no God, there's no rules. Every man just does whatever he thinks is right. It all falls apart. You know what our country wants? Our country wants to pick and choose what parts of the Bible that benefit them and the heck with the rest of it so they can live like the devil. That's the bottom line right there. Is there a God? Yes, sir. Number three, are miracles possible? Now, if you answered yes to the first two, then obviously if there's a God, there's miracles are possible. They laugh at them. They say, you cannot believe that a man stayed in the belly of a whale for three days and it spit him out. Yes, we can. They say that's not possible. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Did you know they found human remains in, in, uh, in a fish's belly? Did you know they've, a man was swallowed by a fish and they got him out alive at one point? Uh, did you know that there are, there are evidences of the miracles in the Bible? Uh, if, if, if the first verse of the Bible is true, in the beginning God created heaven and the earth, then everything else is possible. If he's able to make it all, he's able to break his own, cross his own laws and suspend his laws and work miracles. For example, if God made the heaven and the earth, he has no problem parting the Red Sea so that the children of Israel can walk across on dry ground. That's one of their favorite things when you go to these dead liberal theological seminaries, one of their favorite riffs and pips about the Bible is, they say, oh my goodness, that's not impossible. God didn't part the Red Sea. It was really the Reed Sea. That's what they say. The Reed Sea, not the Red Sea. And it was only about that deep, about four inches deep. And it, an old country boy went to one of them seminaries. You've heard that story. I love it. He went to one of them seminaries and the old professor got up and he said, that ain't true. God, that wasn't but four inches of water. And, and he jumped up and went... Woo! It's a bigger miracle than I thought it was. God drowned Pharaoh and his whole army in four inches of water. And that's what happens when you start laughing at the miracles of the Bible. It'll, it'll come back and double up on you a little bit. Listen, God, is, if he can make the world, he can part the Red Sea. If God can make the world, he can take Elijah up in a chariot of fire by a miracle. If God can write, write the Bible, he can take Enoch up without walking with God, uh, with, with walking with God and without any kind of help whatsoever. If God made the world, he can protect Daniel in the lion's den. If God made the world, 
He can protect the Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. If God made the world, he can uh, 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 feed 5,000 people with some loaves and fishes. If God made the world, he can call Lazarus out of the grave. If God made the world, he can heal blind, deaf, halt, and raise the dead. If God made the world, Jesus Christ can get up out of the tomb. I'm telling you, are miracles possible? Absolutely they are. See them every day. Number four, and I'm done. Is the Bible true? Is the Bible true? Well, if the answer to them first three is true, it sure is. Amen. God is right. Jesus is true. You know, I'm going to tell you right quick, just name, I preach a whole sermon on this, why I believe the Bible's true. One reason I believe the Bible's true is its ability to predict the future. Do you realize the Bible from 400 to 2,000, something like that, years before it happened, predicted 48 details of a man's life before he ever showed up? Jesus Christ. 48 out of 48. Bam. Nailed it. What if I stood up here tonight and I said, in the year 2020, there's going to be a man born in Seattle, Washington, at 2 o'clock in the evening at Mercy Hospital on 18th Street in Seattle. I don't even know if there is such a place. And I, I say, he's going to be the parents. His parents are named John and Elizabeth uh, Weldridge. This man's going to be named John Jr. Weldridge. He's going to get killed at 24 years of age in a wreck in Lincoln, Nebraska at, at, on, on February the 14th in the year 2045. You'd say, well, you're crazy. That's just about five or six prophecies. Forty-eight on the same man, born of a virgin, made his grave with the wicked, tore and took our iniquities, bore our sins, made his grave with the wicked. Every single one. You know why I believe the Bible? It predicts the future and gets it right every time. <whistles> this stuff about Israel. Thank God. Thank God the president. He done something right. Had that capital of Jerusalem uh, move back to uh, to Israel, move to Jerusalem, our embassy. Thank God. That's where it's supposed to be. And the other nations, I hope, will have enough guts to follow suit. Let's that little thing Ralph Sexton put on, on the Internet on that, brother. Every Bible prophecy teacher I know says, praise God, hallelujah, that's their land. That's supposed to be the capital of Jerusalem, of Israel. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that's God's land given to children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not Ishmael. Ishmael's the father of those Palestinians and all those Arabs and all of them. They're not promised that land. The children of Jacob are promised that land, Jews. I'll catch it for that, but it's the truth anyhow. You know how I know the Bible's true? There's no contradiction. If you know somebody that knows, well, I've had that happen several times since I've been preaching. I always heard to do the same thing. That's what I've always done. I, we picked this girl in uh, Mary, and me and somebody was witnessing to her one time, and she said, well, there's contradictions in the Bible. And I just had to them and said, would you show me one? And every time I've ever done that, they said, well, I don't, I don't really know where they're at, but they're in there. They just heard some fool say that, and they said, yeah, I get to drink. That's what happened. They heard some fool say that and said, yeah, I get to get high and I don't have to go to church. Woo, contradictions in the Bible. Show me one. Show me one. Anybody that hears this message, please show me a contradiction in the Bible. You said, well, one place said over there it says 23,000 and another place it said 24,000. Well, that contradiction's in your head, bud. It ain't in that book. There ain't no contradiction in that book. No contradiction in that book. It'll say 23,000, uh, 24,000 died in a plague and 23 in one day. That means there's 1,000 died the other day. Amen? No contradiction in the Bible. Give me another reason I know the Bible's true. It works in the lives of people that believe it. It works in the life. The only way the Bible will work in you is when you believe it. The Bible said it effectually worketh in you that believe. You believe that thing, brother, it'll work in you. I notice when I believe the Bible, it works in me. And when I doubt it, it don't. Let me give you one more thing and I'm done. You know, I know the Bible's true. It's It's a thing called embarrassing details. What does that mean? 
that means no author writes a book and makes himself look bad. Right? Every author in that Bible is a Jew. The oracles God was given to the Jews. Some people fuss about Luke, but the oracles God given to the Jews. So every, we assume every writer in that Bible is a Jew. And listen, people, it gives that Jewish people down the road. Moses, give, listen, if you're going to write a book, look, is there anybody in here when you mess up and do something bad, do you go around telling it? No. Now, we're, we're good at telling what we do good, but we don't tell what we've done bad unless we have to. That's human nature. Man, them people wrote that thing. They put every bad thing about their life. Moses, David, the doubters, doubt and Tom, the disciples all forsook him and fled. That made them all look bad. All the disciples forsook him and fled. That's us. We wrote it. If you're a faking and you're making that up, you don't write to make yourself look bad. That's one. You, you read that thing, there's no other religious book in the world that makes its own people look bad. None. And son, that Jew is out of fellowship with God and all scattered all over creation and God whips them and beats them and whips them and beats them and, and punishes them and chastises them all the way through there. Every book, every Old Testament prophet said, you're out, you're out, you're wrong, you're full of the devil. Jerusalem is blasphemed. They've had heathen, had fake God. Nobody does that. There's a reason for that. It's called embarrassing detail. Amen. Individuals don't tell bad stuff about yourself. So the Bible is true. So if your answer to them four questions is, is what is truth? Jesus Christ, the Bible. Is there God? Gotta be. There has to be. Absolutely has to be. Are miracles possible? Well, if there's a God, miracles are possible. Is the Bible true? Yes, sir. For them four reasons. All right, let's stand by our head. Father, we thank you, Lord, so much. For truth, thy word is truth. We come before you this evening asking forgiveness of all sin. Lord, forgive our doubts. Forgive our unbelief. We know unbelief is wrong and sinful. And we also know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Lord, the reason, reason we doubt your word because we don't read it and don't spend time in it. Help every person in here tonight to make up your mind. To do, to do more, to do, spend time in your word and have faith in it. And in these dark days and difficult times, bless all these kids growing up, going to high school, going to college, going out into a secularized world. Dear Lord, please help them, we ask. Take care of them in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, before you go, everybody give me attention just a second. Um,